Hi, I would like to show you the results on the scope. And remember we had this, uh, um, this analog uh, discovery studio here. And I'm show you on my document camera here. Hope this will uh, show well. And barely you can see anything except here I have this uh, little uh, capacitor Remember this is electrolytic capacitor, you're not supposed to apply AC, but since I'm applying such low voltage and very small current, and this is a 10 K ohm resistor connected in series. That's what I'm doing here. And going to the, the uh, schematic here, what I'm doing here, I'm applying this, this, this from the wave generator. So this is the wave generator. And I'm testing, so I'm monitoring channel one, the input, so this is on the channel one. So this is on the channel one, and the output here, this is on the channel two. We have measured the voltage at channel two. And so this is the, uh, this is the uh, you see all these things are this so I have one negative ne negative negative here so I got a three wires connected to uh, you see here these are three grounds uh, these are the uh, yeah so these are three grounds sorry so these are three grounds and so this 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 is the term of this blue one this is measure the capacitor voltage so this is on channel two okay so that's on channel two the plus right the input to channel two so the channel two is the output uh the output voltage the voltage across the capacitor and let's see um what happens if i change the frequency so let's see right now i'm running the thing and right now I'm running, so this is the uh, function generator. So let me move this so we can see, we can see better over here into the screen area. And so this is the wave generator. I have a hundred hertz, right? That's different from the first condition. We have a hundred here. This is the radian per second, right? The so radian per second is different from 100 hertz. So 100 hertz actually is is 100 times 2 pi. That's corresponds to 628 radian per second. Right, that's 100 hertz. Right now I'm doing, uh, t um, so if we do the uh, 100 hertz, we should use what frequency? So that's 100 divided by 2 pi and if we get 100 radian per second, so this uh, this roughly 15.9 hertz. So the first test point, we should change the frequency 15.9. Let's see if we can do that and see the results. Uh, let's do that. So we change this to 15.9, 15.9. So this is the frequency. And let's look at the output on the scope. I have a scope running. Uh, so the the frequency of 15.9, I should have. Uh, so in this case, in this case, I, let's see right now I have 20, I should have five maybe. No, that's not, that's a position. So that's zero. So let's see, I should have five milliseconds per division. Or maybe ten. Okay, so this is the uh, the output. You can see the output is actually very close to the input, right? So let's see if I can measure this. I think there's something I can uh, I can measure. Right? If I do the measurements, so channel one. Let's see if we can add. So actually I figured out how to measure this. So the channel, uh, so that's the channel one. Actually I need to uh, to add the channel two. Channel two is output. So I was looking at too many measurements. So now I'm, 
I'm measuring the uh, channel one. I have the magnitude. I don't know how to do the uh, the phase angle measurement. Just, let's just focus on the amplitude. So channel one, that's the input of 1.99. That's very close to two volts, right? And for channel two, at this frequency, 15.9, actually 15.92, that should be the um, uh, the uh, 15.92. That's the um, uh, that's the uh, the frequency uh, fifteen point nine two. That's the the frequency in hertz, and so the C two is maximum is so one point nine five roughly. So this is the very close, right? So this is not exactly what I'm saying because the frequency also not the same. Um, not exact, but hopefully we can get a better uh, approximation at a, a thousand. So this one here, we're expecting to see 1.14, uh, 1.414, right? The uh, output, the input is uh, still two volts. Let's change that to C, okay? Uh, let's change that. Change the, um, where is the wave? So in this case, we're gonna change this to, so that's a thousand divided by uh, 159.2 hertz, I believe. I calculated in calculator. So in this case, we need to change the, the time scale on this one also to see better. Uh, so let's see, change this to uh, the 10 millisecond, one millisecond maybe, yeah. So this is the 199 and we got a 1.3, uh, 1.32, uh, the maximum output. Not exactly. Um, so the frequency more accurate is uh, 159.95. Let's see if that will help a little bit. Uh, so we have uh, 1.9, 159.15, that's it divided by two pi. Uh, so let's see if this, the scope here, yeah, we get a one point, uh, so we got a 1.9, maybe we should measure the peak to peak. Let's see for the channel two, and uh, get an idea, channel, define the measurements for channel two, a vertical. Let's see what the peak to peak uh, average RMS. So let's see what's the peak to peak. So the peak to peak are 2.6. Um, yeah, I was I was I was expecting 2.8. So this is not 100% uh, accurate because my R and the C they are not also, also they are not that accurate I believe. So this is not exact at one point to the uh, the resistance, but we are close, right? As we're getting frequency higher, and we can see the magnitude actually getting lower, right? And let's go to a higher frequency. So in this case, let's go to the frequency 10 times higher, correspond to a, uh, correspond to uh, 10,000 reading per second, and that would be 1.59K. And so this is the frequency, the new frequency we're gonna use, so 1.59 kilohertz. That's corresponding to 10,000 reading per second. And let's look at the the output. So the output now is, so it's, it's 0.19 something, right? So this actually is very close. Uh, one eight, so the 189 millivolts, something like that. So let me uh, change the time scale, change to 100 microsecond per, se uh, per division. So in this case, the, the peak to peak, so this is actually very close. So one point, our calculation results is point zero. Yeah, see it's, a, it's almost a point of two, right? Point of 0.199, so in this case we got a 0 0.19189 something like that. Um, so this this actually I believe the capacitor 
uh, the, I believe the capacitor is is not exactly uh, and resistance is not exactly 10k at point one, although the their value claim it to be that way. Okay, so uh, I think that's yeah. So 100 uh, 190 millivolts. So that's 1.9, right? But the max value actually is very close. The max value is 0.19 volts, but the maximum doesn't really um, doesn't really uh, update. I don't know. Oh, I don't know why. Okay. So this one doesn't. So this one doesn't really update this this line there. I should remove that maybe. Oops! I removed all of them. Okay. Anyway, you saw that. As we change the frequency, it goes higher. The output actually, the, uh, the amplitude are getting lower, right? So that's basically the idea of the low pass filter. So basically, at higher frequency, you can't really get through the network. The physical reason behind that is because that little capacitor there at a higher frequency, it becomes a short circuit, right? Because the impedance of the capacitor is, the impedance of the capacitor is one over j omega c. Remember, and and this goes higher, so this this the omega goes higher and this this goes lower, right? So that's that's the sort of physical reason. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here, and uh, see you next lecture. Remember, no matter what you do, just keep going. I never stop, right? Okay, see you next time.